Do you love that I'm pretending like I am a big New York podcaster in the studio? Because everybody now knows what these studios look like. You are a big podcaster in these <laughs> New York studios. I'm not. I mean, I just couldn't have done this without. I'm like, I have to. Like, I mean, I, I don't if know. You're gonna do it. You gotta do it legit. Also, you were not kidding. I knew when I saw the address. Obviously, I've lived in New York. Yeah, I'm very familiar with Canal Street. But you and I had spoken recently because you have been coming to the studio. To this record. is yeah. This is my studio in New York. Yeah, so yes. So I'm at Taylor's. I'm not on the Taylor Strucker show. I am not famous enough to be on Taste of Taylor any longer. <laughs> um, uh, that's fine. It's f cool. Um, I, I just have to. I mean. The ad, the ad game is tough right now. You got to really. I know you got to really come in with the Oof. heavy honchos. Hence, I have you here. <laughs> um, but this canal situation. Girl. -ah! Do we speak to a woman with a menu? Is that the woman who's going to have the best bag? Okay. Who's going to have the best bag? It's very crazy here. So this is all post-COVID. This is brand No, I know. New. That's what I'm saying. Like, I have been on, I've perused canal, but this is out of, like, Chanel's on the street. It's out of canal. It's out of control. But this is the thing. So people don't. So, okay. So Canal Street is like the place to go to get like knockoff bags. And it's always been this way. But pre-COVID, it was like a mission to Mars. Like you would come here and it was very like sneaky back yes. alley vibes. Like I remember legit with my mom and aunts, like <laughs> Getting in the back of a van, going down like dark stairwell. It was fucking yes. I re I remember walking down into a st like in downstairs of some building like in human, the back of a building. Human trafficking? Much? What are we fucking doing here? Yeah, hundred percent. However, I think it was performative. I think it was like it was like it gave the suburbanites a thrill. Do you know what I mean? Like I really now in retrospect, I'm like that shit was fake. That was like a fucking haunted house. Okay, <laughs> this is this is because now. Post COVID, there was so much actual shit going on in the city. Not that there hasn't been historically, but like for whatever reason, the cops were like, we don't give a fuck about this. And it is like a knockoff mall the entire length of Canal Street. Do you have like a particular person that we're gonna visit after this? Cause you're my last interview. So where are we going? Um, <laughs> I'm okay. like, so literally, I don't. I just like, you gotta, first of all, you gotta really put your game face on cause it is aggressive AF and you gotta like negotiate like a champ. So I'm excited to do this with you cause you are savage. So this will be interesting. Am I? I don't know. I also you're don't tough, have enough cash tough. on me. I'm no, like, I'm like you, well, 40 bucks. Bank of America down the street. I've hit it up more times than I like to admit. <laughs> I was just like, well, I, yeah, I kind of do want a Chanel or a Louis Vuitton, but like, oh yeah, this I work. get my Christmas shopping done here. This is like, I fucking, I am everybody's favorite Christmas gift because they've got the fake Goyard. Those, like, they're gonna try to upcharge. So anyway, no, we'll just like, just follow me around. I like, you gotta definitely like test out the merchandise because it can have like wonky straps and shit like that. But wow, I'm pretty good with the eye, and then from there we have to like go to like functionality. I love this for us. I mean, if there was I didn't ever wear my expensive watch because I don't need to be oh. fucking around with that. Okay, I'll just hide it. Just I'll hide, hide it. Oh my god. <laughs> Speaking of like not wearing expensive watches and such, so I went to San Francisco where yeah. you and I fell in love. That's where we met. And I was staying in a very nice, or I booked a very nice hotel. I was staying for one night. I, you know, there's a lot of rumors about San Francisco and how dangerous it is. Right. I mean, I remember back in the day when we met, we were kids. So this is like, I'm aging myself, but it, we were like, it's like it 20 25 years ago. years ago. Not 25. I would have been 13. It was like 22. Okay, fine. It was, it was, it was 20 plus, oh that's for sure. Yeah. But I remember Hate Street was like, let's with like the hippies hung out. And I was like a like wannabe poser hippie. So I would go there. But like there was like a lot of like homelessness and like drug vibes. Nah, shit's off but the But it's everywhere now, I hear. Well, no, it's downtown. So I was staying in a hotel. I had a full adult crazy moment. I like was driving. I'm like, people are so dramatic. The city looks fine. Pull into, and I'm from there. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm like, whatever. Yeah, but Pull you're in, from Tiburon, bitch. Fair enough. But I w lived in the city, went to school, and I mean, true. I went to school in the city. Yeah, I we to, were taking the trolleys everywhere. I don't think we ever took the trolley. I think we took the bus. But I took the bus <laughs> every day to go to school. It's not like whatever. I had to change hotels. No, I was terrified. I walked out of the hotel at one o'clock in the afternoon saw a naked dude ripping at his skin with open wounds everywhere and his disgusting flaccid penis whippling around. And then I saw a woman sh taking a needle and just shoving it into her thigh in underwear and like 
flies everywhere and excrement. Yep. And I just was yep, like, you know what? what? I and I went for a walk. I tried to get a coffee and I called Rachel and I was like, you know what? I'm actually scared. Because it was right in front of the doors of the hotel. You know, it's so crazy to hear you say this. So my sister-in-law lived in San Francisco like uh, five years ago. And she was like, and she's like Miss Woke USA. You know what I mean? So I feel like she has a very like high tolerance for just like, like she's, she's like, she's like a, she's sensitive. She's like, she, she understands the plight of everyone. Right. And even she was like, it's really like, there's a lot, like there's syringes everywhere. Everywhere. There's like excrement everywhere and she's like and i live in a nice neighborhood and so my little brother's actually like looking for residencies right now because he's in medical school and he brought up san francisco and i was like nope don't go there and he was like why it's like one of the nicest and i was like i've heard horror stories about it it just is a it was a really sad like sobering because you try not the news is so alarmist alarmist it doesn't feel real half the time a lot of things are unsamsy uns un Savory no, unsapping. And oh my God, am I stroking Uns- out? No, unsapping. Okay, yep. Anyway, no, I, that. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for me to I'm help not you? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not looking. The, the, over here. the fucking word is not coming. Basically, a lot of it's liar, liar, pants on fire yeah. vibes. Sensationalized. Thank you. you got and it. So sensationalist. Thank you. I, I Wow, that was so <laughs> wild what I just went through. But I, it was awful. I was like, Rachel, I can't do it. I was like, I got to go stay up in Knob Hill <laughs> um, where it's I'm crazy. familiar. But it was a bummer to me. But do you feel like that's how New York is now? No, I. I've had a great, I mean, yeah. I woke up this morning, I walked, I took the train last night to go see my sister for dinner yep. uptown. I, I act, when I come to New York, what I love about it, and this is probably why, one, I'm not going to, I know you love LA. I know you like LA. I, I like you, LA. You like LA. I like. But I think this is where I feel like my depression exploded in Los Angeles is I like to throw on headphones yep. and walk. Yep. And I like to, so this morning I was a little hungover. I woke up as I always am in New York. I woke up at eight o'clock in the morning. I knew I had to come here all day. And I was like, I'm going to walk. And I walked so for an hour and a half and just like grabbed a coffee, met Sarah Paulson in Washington Square Park, which was very crazy. We talked about our dog. How did you meet? Like, well, okay. I just actually talked about this with Leah McSweeney, who was just on the show. Um, hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. Um, and this guy was following me, and he kept being like, yo, yo, if I Venmo you $5, will you give me $5 cash? And I was like, I have this a- This game. I was like, I have a strong suspicion that you don't have Venmo. And also, like, we're in a cashless society, so, like, right. no. And Sarah Paulson <laughs> laughed. And then I looked over, and she had all these little chihuahuas, which we know, ravioli, the light of my life. Right. And I go, oh, I really miss my chihuahua. And her dogs were going, and she had three, in every single which direction. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. And they were, like, barking. And I'm like, oh, God, my... uh, Chihuahuas are... I don't think people necessarily know this that don't own chihuahuas. They are, like... They only like one person. Well, ravioli... No, they don't only... They only like the people they like. Isn't ravioli like a... She's like a She's a Cocker Spaniel. She's a hybrid. She's a hybrid. She's a Cocker Spaniel miniature pincher poodle chihuahua. So probably like it it like curbs the the bitch ass appeal. Nah, she's a chihuahua. I mean, she just loves Rachel and I, but she loves her auntie Maureen deeply. She loves like two dogs. Anyone else can get fucked. She has no interest. Yeah doesn't want you, yeah. doesn't like you, also might really like you, won't let you touch her. That's my aunt right now is staying with my parents, and she has an, a chihuahua named Alice. <laughs> I've been, I've never been more scared of anything in my entire life. I, she's three <laughs> pounds! Yeah. And she, she is, thank God, her teeth are like half rotten out, because otherwise we would all have no hands. I'm she's dead. terrified. I've never been more scared of anything in my but life. But that's like a full, ch- yeah, that's like Leah has two of those. But Ooh. yeah, Sarah Paulson, and then last week, you know, my relationship with Kate Menning and Leisha Haley has now developed. So here's the thing. I might be shadow banned on the internet and I will never be able to get brand deals because I'm <laughs> less than a micro influencer, but I would just like, you're every, a great I'm, social climber. I'm the social climbing <laughs> is Klimith. That's why we're friends. We, we, we like game respects game. Yeah, he recognizes fair. game. Game does recognize game. I mean, you've had quite a I'm good too. six months. You're really good at social climbing. You social climb like, cause the, I can social climb once I'm in, but you can social climb like you, like 
it's it's wild what you accomplish, honestly. Really? Yeah, I think that you are, I mean, wax on, wax off. You're my mentor. <laughs> Yeah, but you're like going on tour yeah, yeah, and yeah, now yeah, yeah. like when you've I really in, done I the thing. I get fucking in, but like you cast a wider net. Fair enough. You've got more. I've got fewer but close, like crazy close. Yeah. Once I get my hooks in you, famous person, beware. Yeah, but you know what? And I know you don't like to share the wealth, but you not have kidding. to introduce me to Jackie Schimmel. Oh, 100%. See, I know she's not that, that, I know you guys are close, but not that, that close. So that's the only one I want from you. Yeah, fuck yeah. Jackie is, fuck, you guys would hit it off. She's amazing. I am desperate for her. I just find her so. Good luck getting her out of the house. I just to, need her to get on have Zoom. To, I'm going to have to figure out how to get her, how to get her out of the house so that you can meet her. So that we can meet. That's yeah. fine. I'll take that. I just need her to go on Zoom for about 40 to 45 minutes. You know what? This is the difference between me and you. You can meet a celebrity or a major person and you can get in there instantly. My game, it's a, we have different tactics. You're hot, you're heavy. You go in like, you could see somebody at a party and you'll walk up to that person and you'll make besties with them. Yeah, you will. Yep, mm -hmm. I won't. I, I, I'm like a, I'm a slow burn. I see you. I like, I, I, I get, I like, I'm like very delicate getting in there. And then once I like know I've got you, that's when I, that's when I'm like, and now you're mine forever. I sort of pulled a Taylor Strecker approach with Jennifer Beals on Thursday night. Tell me. Well, we were at this table. I was at the celebrity table because if you were unaware, I am celebrity adjacent. <laughs> and I was there sitting next to Kate Menning and Leisha Haley, who I adore, who came to my event, like whatever. They hosted an event with me, blah, blah, blah. And they go, oh, have you ever met Jennifer? And I was like, no. They're like, Jennifer, this is Liz. Gen like flash dance is in my, uh, in, I mean, hilarious. Crazy. Bet Porter. And she was like, hi. I, with that, like, hi, I'm Jennifer. And I was like, oh, hey, Jennifer. Anyway, so back to my story. See, and that's why you're, we have different tactics. I'm like, like, you, you're, you're a master at doing that. I watched you do it. it th th these people weren't celebrities, but they were, like, important dudes. You could just tell, or at least they wanted people to think they were important. Ooh, where was this? We were at, um, uh, God, we were at fucking... Soho House, but not in the Soho House. We were at, what's that oh, restaurant? Chacon. Oh, you're talking about when I was mean to those guys next you to us. You were mean to the guys next to us. And like, I was like, this is going to be a disaster. And then you somehow flipped it around into them like worshiping you. It, I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. <laughs> I really was Treat them mean, keep them keen, Taylor Strecker. That's what you do. Um, You went on this crazy tour. Yes. With Stassi Schroeder. And Bo Clark, her husband. Um, you are now on a, a weekly host on the toast. I'm not a weekly host on the toast. Yeah, you are. I'm a regular, a familiar face on the toast. How do you feel? I feel like the pandemic, I feel like you, all of a sudden, you've, you've really like come out of pandemic vibes. You're like in it to fucking win it. Really? You think that? I think, I mean, I think you always were. Well, thank you. No, I feel it. No, it's nice to hear that. Cause like, I am so hard on myself. You're like on the internet all of the sudden you're tagging. Am I becoming clothes. a good influencer? Yeah. I <gasps> think the bad influencer thing, I think you're not allowed to say that. Anymore. The world's worst inf influencer can't do that anymore. No, cause well, you're pretty good. Who? Wow. You're thank on TikTok. You. you have like many thousands of followers no, on I, TikTok. No, please, please don't I ever think, sell my TikTok. My TikTok is, is it's weak sauce. But, but do you, are you going to keep going with the TikTok? I'm like, I might tap out. Listen, uh, my producer, Heva, who I recently, she's probably only been with us for like six months to she's eight great. months. She's great. She's amazing. She's got like her eye on the goddamn prize. So like she is, she's just like, all I need for you is to take video of the podcast you're already doing and I will repurpose it on TikTok. So that's actually what's helping. That's nice. But I do get people like, even Claudia will be like, you're you're in my like uh, for you feed on TikTok. I don't know why it's working. I did have Claudia on. Um, so this was strategic, but like Claudia knew what I was doing. It wasn't like a secret. And like, she's like a fucking great friend where she's like, she's like, absolutely, I'll do that for you. So she was on sabbatical from the toast. They were taking okay. like a month off. And... <clears throat> She 
uh, but they have a Patreon. So her and Jackie, they did this like, but Patreon only VIP reveal that she had been on Ozempic for like a year. I saw that she did that for you. And that was so, a solid. That was a solid. That was friend. a solid. And so I was like, hey, before you come back, and I wanted to put distance between us. It's like you want to, of course, drive people to go to the Patreon because, like, that's where like all the good stuff is. I mean, I get that. I have a Patreon, but it was like a week out from, the, maybe even days out from the toast coming back, and like three weeks out from her doing that on Patreon. And I was like, can we do it? And she was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. I mean crazy downloads on taste of taylor and then we put the socials out and like we got like over f I, I mean at this point on tiktok now no who's who knows but it was like over 500k i think going viral on tiktok is a million but this was like a million i'm sure it's like to it could even be at like 750 at this point who fucking knows on tiktok but like yeah so but that's very unique with a q you know what i mean that's very not unique i mean listen i just tried to have leah drop something on the show and she was like i can't and i was like you're so annoying but <laughs> when i had the last show she did tell us how she got on roni and that went to page six how'd she get on roni mm. bethany frankel's facialist shut the fuck up because no bethany way mentioned yeah they have the same facialist and she like her facialist was talking about Leah to Bethany and Bethany was like, oh, they're trying to do something younger. That would be good. And Bethany wasn't even on at this point. She no, like and like forward. not even cool. And that's how she got on. But Leah waited to tell that story on scissoring. See? And that was a homie. But I tried to get her to do something similar today. And it's fine. You also like, listen, I think all of us that are in different areas of entertainment, like you got to be strategic and Absolutely. like no, you know what I mean I respect I don't like find it offensive I'm like yeah girl don't tell me that shit the worst thing that can happen and you know this better than anyone because I've done this to you what? is when you fucking say something you're not allowed to say and then you shame spiral yes. to all goddamn yes. hell and then you beg someone to take it out of your show listen I'm like I'm at a point I've been doing audio since 20 since 2006, okay? And I mean, I was at Sirius, for anybody that doesn't know, I was at Sirius for like 12 years. Everyone that listens to my show <laughs> knows exactly where you came from and who you are. Hey, girl, Don't hey. worry. <laughs> By the way, somebody sent me a meme recently that was like, because everybody's always like, I repeat my stories. Well, guess what? I care about the fucking environment. It's called recycling. You're Somebody sent me that so meme. I was like, that is, thank you. That goes on the I'm feed. A, I'm that a sustainable girly. You are sustainable. Everybody's welcome. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. That's but so um, but no, I mean, I just like, I have been there where I've said stuff that I regretted. So I never want my platform to be the thing where somebody like, if like, you might say something, forget, or like not realize how bad it is, it goes out and then you have to deal with it. But like, if somebody in the moment is like, wait, I regret that, I will never not edit it out. Well, no, 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 no. Of course you would. But I'm just saying it's more so fucking annoying to edit it. I'm like, don't so do that. Annoying. Like, or just like, don't, come on or like I don't know I mean you know better than anyone you've taught me so much about this I mean I'm half the time I'm like are you good with saying this it's like when just what's his name announced he had a love child on scissoring and it went viral that was so crazy. which was fucking crazy and I of course was like do you want us to edit this out are you okay I sent him like all these flowers the next day I'm yep. like are you cool are you cool because you know you don't want to say something that will could affect your livelihood or your it's career. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It might be like a, a really poppy, like shiny thing in the moment, but it's it's long term. It's just not worth the ramifications. So, like at Sirius, I, there was like two different kinds of people that did radio, right? There was like shock jocks who like their whole thing is like they want gotcha moments. And I would say that Jenny McCarthy, in my opinion, was one of those people. I remember this like it was yesterday. Um, Tara Reid came in, and like Tara Reid's Tara Reid, like hello, but she's still a fucking person. So she came in, and I, in my opinion, she was out of it that's all that, that's the extent of I'll say it fill in the blanks however you will and I could tell that I probably could get a lot of out of her in that moment because she was just like not with it but I like I'm, I'm a person I like kind of felt bad for her and I was like she's Tara Reid like get like gotcha moment with Tara Reid it's not like you're not like um you're not like an expert at your job like yeah so anybody can I don't know I just like there was like moments where I just I didn't want to push her it's and also I, a shitty thing to do when someone's clearly had not drug and alcohol mind. issues and like is fucked it, 
not seeming like they're in. Could I, if I had asked her if she was under the influence, gotten a headline? Sure. But I'm like, that's not how I want my legacy to be. No, no, no. So I didn't. We, it was a shitty interview. Whatever. It's not going to go anywhere. Fine. She went to Jenny McCarthy right after and she ended up walking out. Because Jenny was pushing her really, really hard. And, like, that was, like, that was like her her brand, you know? It was, like, well, like, that's going to get me a headline. I would, and this is probably why she's Jenny McCarthy and I'm me. And, like, I, <laughs> she's super famous. First of all, all shows. excuse me. You're, mm, right, That's cute. I love you, but that, that, that that's cute. But, like, that's the thing is that, like, I, like, getting headlines and embarrassing people and burning those bridges, it's just not fucking well, worth it. It's not it. worth it. It's also just not the, it's not. I just don't, I think you're right. There are other people that are going to do that. And I don't think that's who you are as a person. And I, I think, I don't think that's why people lo- have, you have the dedicated and loyal listenership that you've yes. amassed because people are like, oh, cool. Like Taylor's going to like trick someone into talking shit. You know no, what I mean? I mean, that's some people's entire blueprint for this industry. No, I am acutely aware. Um, but it's interesting, though, because I feel like Bravo is really getting, like, even Watch What Happens Live is becoming a little bit of a gotcha. Like, the Mary Crosby, did you see her? With Z-Way? Yeah, I'm making comments about my homie Heather Gay. I did not enjoy. Yeah, I really, I wasn't feeling that. Do you think that Bravo has gotten, like, I mean, you and I know a, that a lot of it isn't real. I mean, it isn't, it isn't, though. Like, that's the thing. Like, it's getting a little, it's getting a little spicy. I mean, I have not watched the Roni reunion because I'm on. I am a day behind, too. Actually, I have yet to watch it. I did read an article that said, like, who won it and who lost it. So, so tell me who won it. Uba won, which I love because Uba's my girl. Yeah, that's your homie. Forever. So Uba won. But see, this is the thing, too, right? So Uba's my friend. I just actually got off a call about something and I'm not going to give too many details, but I got off a call and the person that asked me this favor was not being rude at all. Like I'm very much a fan of like, shoot your shot. You got to fucking shoot your shot. But like you also, when the answer is no, like be gracious about that as well. So I, people know I'm really close with Uba. Uba and I met a million years ago um, at Soho House. Um, My mom made friends with her for me. Oh, right, you told me. That's right. Because I'm a loser like that. And Uba was really there for me during my divorce. She was there when I first started dating Taylor. Like, Uba was there, like, during really important times. Yeah. And then we lost touch during the pandemic. Like, just whatever. Like, everybody did. And then she, out of nowhere, thank thank God she did this. Because if if the roles were reversed, I feel like I wouldn't be in a position where I feel like I could do this because she was going to be on Roni. But she reached out to me and was like, Amore, I miss you. It's been forever. We, like, we got to reconnect. And then, like, a month later, it was, it was announced, announced that she was on Roni. And I was so grateful because she knows me. Like, I, w- I probably wouldn't have reached out because I'm like, we haven't talked in, like, two years, and I'm going to reach out because you're on Roni. Like, that's gross. Like, I yeah, can't do that. Enough. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, So I was so grateful she reached out to me because she, like, opened the door for us to rekindle. And I actually went to the premiere with her. We had dinner afterwards. She's just the most wonderful person. Oh, I love – I mean, I just adore her. I cannot say enough – amazing things about her and I was so you know it's always scary when you have your friend on a show because that you like really deeply care about because like it it could go left and with Uba (laughs) thank god the world was like she is an angel yeah the heavens above because she genuinely is um but anyway but a friend of mine was recently like hey um we're doing something like we were gonna reach out to Uba to see if she could join Mm. we know your friends could you and I was like no and I said, and, and respectfully, no, and it's okay that you asked. And I said, but just, I, like, I, like, it's very important to me that Uba knows that, like, her being my friend is the most important thing. Not her coming on Taste of Taylor, not her doing favor, especially, like, I'm not even going to ask her for favors for me career-wise. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll put up feelers, but, like, if she's busy, she's busy. I just, like, it's very, it's like a delicate dance you have to do. Do you know what I'm Are saying? You ta- who the fuck do you think you're Oh, you know, to? you know. I'm- <laughs> I'm like my whole you want to know what happened Delicate. to me last week are you gonna die about this what this fucking woman invited me to this conference i was actually just telling leah this and she was dying this woman was starting to email celebrities that i know that she either saw follow me on instagram or have been on cool 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 or scissoring right emailing them with me cc'd without my permission asking them to speak at her conference but making it appear as like if her- i was going to be interviewing them or co-signing them. And then when they respond, I didn't see it because I was in the middle of a meeting. And then when I was like, whoa, why are you emailing? And these are big celebrities, like not little ones, like not, I shouldn't say little ones, but like not like, 
people that were I could just like easily be it's like people I've never even asked to come on the show I know I know exactly what you're talking about and let me be clear the person I was just talking about because they'll probably catch one of this potentially I was not mad at them at all I was and I explained I was like you don't sound mad you said it was all good shoot your shot but like yeah if you can do it you can do it and if you can't you can't I get that shit all the time but 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 there have been times where people do overreach always they, it's unfucking believable what? I remember one time wait hold oh, on it, ha wait. it happened with Uba recently and it was a different situation. Oh, I gotta tread lightly. Um, there was like a brand that like wanted me to promote something on social, which is like, like my agent would be like, no, no, send that to me, whatever. So this brand wanted me to post something. And like, I was annoyed, but I'm like, ah, fuck it, whatever. It was like, it dealt with like, like the town I grew up in type sure. of stuff. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's like, again, shoot your shot, I get that. But they included a box for Uba. And I was pissed. Cause I was like, that is so fucking like that. It like it just felt so blatantly usury, and I was like really mad. I remember Tane, I thought about this because she was like, it's not that big of a deal, and no. I was like, I was like, no, it just feels so disrespectful. Like, like I don't even know this person, and so for them to even ask me to do something as a favor, that's the favor. It's like a guess of a guess can of I guess kind of a thing, but like in reverse. But it's like. So you're like shooting your shot with me. That's a shot alone. And then you're just going to give me a package with for Uba? Like, what are you talking about? No, I was no, mad. No. Well, listen to this, though. So I messaged this woman. I said, are you, I'm confused why you're emailing my contacts without asking me. Are you wanting me to interview them on stage? And she went into this whole rigmarole about how she doesn't do firefied, sire, fireside chats, which is a lie because I saw them all on the thing and that like basically insinuating that I wasn't famous enough to interview these people and I lost my mind but I screenshot her text but here's the th funny thing about me and you know because you know how I know people yes I screenshot her shit sent it to all the celebrities and went hey yo my bad. This woman got my fucking Conde email somehow and is emailing you. I had nothing to do with this. I am so sorry. And one of them, a very famous person who I will not name, wrote back and was like, hey, I'm actually not interested in this, but if I was, I would only want Liz to interview me. And I, I was like, dead. you're a fucking homie. But what the fuck, dude? No, like, it's really, it's really, really, really wild. It's just, and you know what? Here's the thing. Like, you have helped me so much with podcast. I've learned so much from you. I oh love Oh my God, being, please, you're a natural. I love being on the Taylor Strucker show. I hope I return. You um, are, you are returned. I gave, I gave Heva my schedule until like the year 2026. <laughs> I was like, just to let you know, here's my availability. But no, but I've learned like, also I think your, how you interview people, I've learned so much from you. Thank I, you. I, it's true, I love you. And it's you. The real, it's true. But I think navigating some of this, I mean, I've been dealing with this forever. Like, let's be real here. Do you know how many motherfuckers come out the woodwork asking me for Vanity Fair Oscar party? I mean, it's oh, like, I can't. I, I can't and imagine. it is so wild. Like, but isn't it wild when you see what people like? I remember I worked at Sirius, and there was like um, a fucking a U two. Who gives a fuck about U two? But a U two concert and a girl I had. Oh, met, like Bono, like fucking Bono, and it was like a serious <laughs> only friends and family like event and. First of all, yeah, fucking right, Sirius was giving me tickets to that. But this girl that I hadn't talked to in a year out of the goddamn blue was like, oh my God, I'm the biggest YouTube fan. And I was like, bitch, I, I can't even get tickets and I work here, so like, LOL. But like, also, never text me again. Wait, the like, best, the hold on, the best is a social media personality, a woman who like, looks at celebrity outfits and then like dissects what they wear and makes TikTok. I've never met her in my life. She followed me. I followed her back. So I was like, oh, that's cute. She kind of like is like an LTK or whatever you're on. Yes. Whatever. Um, shop, I'm on Shop My. But LTK is fine. Yes. Whatever. whatever. Same. I'm affiliate. on Shop My too. Yeah, like yes. an affiliate thing. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like her content, whatever. This bitch reaches out to me and asks me if I could get her ticket. This is true story. Get her tickets to the Rockefeller tree lighting. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what? First kind of, of all, no. no. Like, 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 even if you were my best friend, even if you were like, but also, the answer would be what? no, like, I can't get tickets to that, but also, what? No, it was very, it was very. There strange. was one time I got, oh my God, this one's gonna get me in trouble. Although, if you come out of the woodwork and you claim this, that's on you. 
Okay. As we've just discussed, not talking about things like this. So I, um, I worked on a show called Younger. Yes, we know this. And I work with this amazing cast, Hillary fucking Duff, Nico Tortorella, uh, Sutton Foster. I mean, like, the list is just it, 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 the most amazing people. I adore them. And they really, like, brought me in, like, to the fold. Like, you're family. You're part of the team. They were wonderful to me. But, like, also, like, I haven't asked a lot of them to come on Taste of Taylor. And maybe that's my fault. Maybe sometimes I should be more... Like, I should ask more and, like, be more assertive because, you know, the worst thing people can say is no. But I'd rather, like, I'd rather keep good relationships than, like, over push people. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I remember Nikki Glazer. I love Nikki. I knew Nikki back in the day before she was Nikki Glazer. And I reached out to have her on Taste of Taylor, and she was like, yes, but I am so podcasted out. And I'm like, girl, totally fine. Now, I probably should have, like, wrapped back around and, like, booked yeah. her. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, I my, my number one thing is, like, I will – I three strikes you're out no no I will try twice and if it doesn't happen after the, se the second time I'm just gonna like let it go and release it but I'm not gonna be mad at you you know what I mean because like I yeah, feel fair like enough because I wh whatever I I just I, it's more about maintaining the relationships than like anything else and eventually it will all you know it'll all work out and shake out anyway whatever but so I somebody dm somebody dm'd me and was like hey I really want to go see the music man on Broadway but also go backstage. And also, like, you know Sutton, so can you, like... Oh, I was... And I'm like, what? Like, I wouldn't even ask Sutton for this for me. And I honestly don't know what I said to them. If I lied to you, I'm, like, sorry, but I'm also not sorry. Um, but, like, I just was, like, I, I just... I'm flabbergasted by the cojones on some people when it comes to favors, especially people you literally don't even know. Don't ever know. I mean, I did that event that um i hosted a fundraiser last week lisha and kate were there they're so nice they're like lovely um i did not ask them to come on the podcast they their podcast is so big pant it's called pants they are crushing it and of course we were sitting at the table and this we were sitting across from this very famous astrologer and i was like will you come on my podcast and kate was like no we just asked her to come on our podcast and i was like well, she's coming on both of ours. And I in I walked away from it and I was like, should I have like asked them? But like, I don't really know them. And right. I kind of want to be friends with them because they right. seem really nice and cool. And I don't want to seem transactional. Yes. So that's like, it's, delicate. it's delicate. It's really, it is very, very tricky. And I feel like it's just a gut feeling. And honestly, I, I bet my gut is wrong in like the way of like, I think people would be more like, of course I'll come on. You're and a famous I, person, Taylor. I might, no, I'm not. And I might be, I might be insulting people if I don't ask them on. Like I've, I've realized that too. I'm like, oh God, maybe I'm like being rude, not asking. I am just so. Sutton Strack said that to me. What'd she say? She was like, I can't believe it's taking you this long. And then she got mad at me because she talked for like an hour and a half and I don't even know what the fuck she was talking about. <laughs> so I had to like edit it. And I adore, you know, I like adore, adore her. her. Um, and I was just like, said, I don't even, and she was like, it's fine. You just, you just made it all about, I know, I know the Bravo stuff. I'm like, no, I literally cut out every single thing you said about the show. And I just wanted to hear about like your weird horse that you bought and like your fucking uh, apartment in New York and Paris. Like, no, actually. But yeah, I think it is a delicate thing. I think, you know, podcasting is an, it's an interesting space. You've obviously been in audio for so long. Forever. Seen the boom. Oh my God, like what? Like, are we like, I feel like we're we're rapidly approaching 20 years. That's psychotic. Do you, f that is psychotic. It's now becoming so video focused, which no. I'm like, what the fuck? Me is and my point? fucking blinking. Like, my nightmare. <laughs> but. What was that? I I have the blinkies. I've had them since I was little. I know, I was, but it's so I cute. went to allergists over it. I went to fucking therapists over it. My parents I could love not figure out blinkie. what it was. And then one day my dad was like, oh, we have this thing called Botox. My mom was like, hello, Richard. Where have you been? Our daughter has been. Like, I would go on auditions for commercials. We met in acting school. I went on, like, yeah. and they would be like, she's adorable, but the blinking is super distracting. <laughs> I'm Literally. I'm so, dying. like, when I got into audio, I was like, this is fucking perfect because, like, I can, like, use my, like, talent and personality, but I pretty much don't really have to be on camera. This is a goddamn dream. And then fucking podcasting happened, and then the fucking technology happened, and then fucking social media happened, and now, like, I remember there was a time where Dear Media, and I loved Dear Media, and they're a wonderful company to work with, they were like, hey, you 
fucking have to do video. Like you are falling behind and you are the OG sister. Like yeah, get it are. fucking together. We literally, they like part of my contract, they pay for studio space. Like get your ass into the studio. And it took me so long because I was so insecure. I wasn't insecure about the weight for sure, but also the blinkies. I mean, the blinkies are, but I just have to fucking embrace it. Wait, I'm, <laughs> I'm dead. I love the Blinkies. Well, thank you. That's so sweet. I mean, they're it's so the most they endearing rage thing. So hardcore on the Taylor Strecker show. They rage the most. Like you'll see them here, but it's more intense when I'm looking at like the Zoom because I'm like my eyes are like also reacting to like the blue light. Oh my god! So the blinking and also like it, it's really bad when I'm thinking. If I'm thinking, I'm like it. It, it gets really. Crazy. And then also, I have a nose thing, but I'm like, I've kind of got that under control. I, I can't even talk about it. It just makes me want to do this. It's like- my, I'm dying because, I mean, I've noticed you blink here and there, but the blinkies is the cutest thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I'm trying to embrace it for all, for, for everybody else that has the blinkies out there in the world. A lot, a lot of like CNN correspondents have the blinkies, but they have like, they have like, um, it's like, um, it's, um, what's the word? It's like symmetric blinkies. So it's So like, they're just going- yeah, they're just blinking with both eyes, but like having just like the one rogue blinky, it's like really. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I'm dying. I'm like, okay, I did not. Where? So yeah, video is yeah. really not my favorite, but I'm getting much more used to it. Like I'm so yeah, comfortable doing this right now. Like I like I've gotten very comfortable with this. I'm very comfortable on the toast. Um, I guess I'm comfortable on Zoom, but like it just Zoom sucks, like the quality and everything. Zoom sucks, the quality sucks, but I will say, you know, I so we're here today. There is an LA one, which is great. There's another studio I just went to, yeah, which was great. It's one, it's as you know, it's just like it's cost. It's like you have to make it worth it. Yes. I love I prefer podcasting in person. Me However, too. Like, I'm sure you realize this during the pandemic. People can sometimes say yes easier if it's on Zoom. One million percent. So I'm like, yeah, 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 we can just do it on Zoom. Yeah, opportunity on Zoom. But we're getting to a place now where, you know, that being on camera. And, like, listen, you can get video footage from Zoom. But this just tends to do way better. It does do better. And I think the vibe is different. You get different interview. I, it's just an I My have, downloads are up like a significant amount. And I there's no way I can die. Like, yes, I've been booking, like being more strategic with booking and stuff. But like it's I really think it actually has to do with the video component. It just it's just amazing promotion. Is all of do you put your video on YouTube or is it just on the Patreon? So no, no, no. So my right now I only use my podcast uh video for promo, strictly promo. So like you can see it on TikTok, you can see it like on my Instagram. Like, in feed I try to post as much as I can but like um that's it like people are like where can I watch the whole thing and I'm like uh nowhere like the that this is the thing too that people don't realize editing audio totally feasible totally cost effective editing video it's a goddamn no. different game well what I've done is all, I just put up it's too the, expensive I, it's too expensive I just if the interview doesn't have any edits like, no one fucked up. Everything's fine. Sure, maybe we took out a little bit of here and there just for timing. That all goes to my Patreon. That's great. That's and that's great. the only place the video goes. I need to start doing more video. I've, I've done a couple of videos. Uh, we, we've done some, like, Taylor Shrekker Show videos. But those are all exclusively Zoom. Because that, that's an everyday show. So, like, that needs to be, like, an easy. Yeah, of course. Easy, easy recording. But we've actually had requests from some audience members to post, like, Taste of Taylors in full length. So, we did, like, one with Andrew Collin a couple from a couple months ago, we've actually done it. And I actually don't know if we edited <laughs> to line up with the actual edit of Taste of Taylor. Probably not. Probably not, if I'm asking that question. No, I'm like, literally, I'm telling you no, because it's just too hard. And Andrew and I are like, very, very, like, he is just, he's a comedian. He's so fucking irreverent. So, Andrew, <laughs> I can't be held responsible. It's fine. It's did you post it on the Patreon or on YouTube? Patreon. Yeah, who cares? At least it's there. It's a little safer. It's safer. I like the Patreon. I've been doing um extra episodes. I did one completely drunk last night. Oh, I love a drunk Patreon. I love a drunk podcast. Stassi and I years ago did. We were so drunk and we took edibles. We I don't even know. Honestly, I should go fucking find it because we were so fucked up and neither one of us has ever been able to bring ourselves to listen to it. And we were like crying about how much we love our family. We really. <laughs> I mean, mine was borderline 
<laughs> that vibe last night because it was just, and I didn't have anyone to foil against. So it was just Solos me are a vibe. in the fucking hotel bed, drinking wine, eating the light. Oh, I read the, the price menu for all of the mini bar. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's dark. I was just like, you guys need the content. Where are you is. staying? Ho Soho Grand. Yeah, you are. I always stay there. That's a good one. Because it's like not $2,000 a night like Soho House. But it's like right but there. But it's like right there. And I feel safe and it's good. And at, after my San Francisco experience, I... Didn't know what to do. Um, so speaking of the Taylor Strucker show, please. Why am I your favorite co-host? Because <laughs> you're so easygoing. You never give me a hard time. <laughs> yeah, but I give you a hard. You know what? I somebody screenshot once in the Facebook group. They're like, Liz doesn't get let Taylor get away with anything. In the and what, wait, like, in the what group? In the what? Group? In the, I know I'm not allowed on it. I this was a long time ago. <laughs> Like, I feel like it's, if anything, I if, if I don't let you get away with anything, it's more like I push you because I'm so, I want you to be the best. And I love I you. I'm not me. Am no, I me? You're not me. No, Liz, you are just very, you just have a very assertive personality. <laughs> and the thing is, is like, it's not, I know it's not just me. It's literally everybody. Everybody you love, everyone you're friends with, everybody that you work with. It's just how you are. The strangers at Chaconis, it's everybody. Oh, God. But it is endearing. No, no, no. I mean, obviously, like, I love you. Like, where I'm I'm here. No, I know, but I was like, I saw somebody screenshot this and sent it to me and says, Is this why you're not on the show very much anymore? And I was like, Oh my God. Am I, I'm not putting you on the spot because I know that it's not true. But I was like, Oh my God. I really have the narrative no. that I'm telling myself is that I'm like, I know that Taylor Strucker is the biggest star on the planet. So maybe Oh, you I are there, there's her. nobody who makes me feel like a bigger star than you. It's you nice are. I'm really not. But no, you are just, this is, it's like, you're just very assertive. I, but I, it, it's your love language and I know that. Okay, good. And also, just to be clear, audiences are so interesting. Like, they really are. And I've learned so much over the years. I mean, again, 20 years I've been doing this. Like, I fucking understand, like, the goddamn anthropological studies of an audience. You, I mean, of course you do. And I can't, it's like... This and is, they've been with you for so long. For so long. This is and 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 the thing too is, and I was just talking about this with I just recorded with Wider. We were just talking about this, but like it really is like the squeaky wheel definitely gets the oil, and that's not a good thing. It really shouldn't be the thing because like the majority of the audience is so fucking chill, the chillest, chill, supportive, down, fucking awesome, like like girly girls, like like your bud. No, I invited one. I invited one. I invited a listener to my Soho House panel about yes. podcasting. Yes. Oh, my God. Do you know that she showed up with the bag that I've always wanted in my whole life? Oh, that's what it is. You guys are fucking rich and stylish. Tur turquoise Chanel. It's, it's with insane. With the caviar. These with girls the, are with like. With the silver hardware. I was like, damn. No, but she, like, came and I, like, tried to kick it with her after. I had the time of my life in Vegas one weekend with a listener. Oh, I know. She I'm keeps... fucking upset. Lindsay, I love you. Yo, Lindsay, if you're listening, let's go to Usher. I really want to go. Lindsay, there's no... Lindsay's the queen of Vegas. I like, know. the way that I am just blown away by this audience, they're so incredible, but... There is, I call them the Unfed 25. We all know that. But like, there is like, it's small, but God damn, are they mighty. And as we know with social media in any, when it comes to anything, small and mighty does, they make an impact. You know, they, they, they really do. I think everyone's starting to see though, that it's like, oh, you're not the majority. You're just fucking loud. I think people are trying to like starting to get that. But I will say, so I want to be clear. I'm not speaking about the majority of the audience. The majority of the audience isn't divisive. They don't want us to not get along. But there's always that element of an audience, and it happened at Sirius too, where like they're naturally, it's like they're children. It's like my, my therapist would say to me, like, you better be in a good place in your marriage when I was married to husband before you have kids because kids are naturally divisive. Like they will expose all the cracks in a relationship. And if you're strong, you'll be fine. But like they're tough. And I feel like audiences or like the like the shit stir por portion of audience, they're naturally divisive. So that's the thing is like, mm. you know, like we like you and me, we got to stick together. You can't 100 percent. I would die. Page no, be your reflection. I, no, no. And I don't. And I think it's so interesting because and I have also learned from you to say absolutely nothing because, you know, I want to go hard on. I know you do hard in the paint. I want to go hard in the paint and be like, first of all, bitch. 
don't talk about my homie like that because I'm protective of you. I know. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, I will fucking hurt Well, that's the thing too. And there's subtle nuances to everybody's relationship, right? So like we can make a joke, but then when all of a sudden the peanut gallery is like, you know, popping off. I mean, I will say, I it's my dream to be a housewife, but nothing has given me more of a housewife adjacent experience than my fucking show. Specifically well, I was, the Taylor you, Trucker show. You literally just took the words out of my mouth because I was going to say it. It feels like you are the only housewife like it is your housewife show it's like almost like don't be tardy for the party like we are all 19 of you and whatever it's wild. like we are all your children that you decided to have like back it, yes. like there's on a child like and off. on and off you like have big papa who's no longer in the picture like <laughs> taylor is croy like this amazing football player like sports fanatic i'm like i don't love this analogy given where their marriage is right oh, now <laughs> that's fair enough i'm just saying it's like silly but like we are i just meant it more in the sense that like she yes. was one housewife who had her show yeah but it is that interesting I mean, I know you're obviously not going to, like, give me the scoop, even though I would just like to say from a charity perspective, if you were, and I don't know anything, if you were to be booked on The Housewives, I would just like to put my hat in the ring for you to announce it, at least on my TikTok. Girl. Which I know I'm so far down the totem pole, but no, none of the none of your friends need any more listeners. Um, I am not going to be on The Housewives. Would, are you, like, now. done? To, but would you, are you st would you still do it? If they came to you tomorrow and they were like, you are going to be on the new Roni. I would be so fucking down. Are you kidding me? I would never, ever be able to say no. If I'm being honest, though, I don't think I could hang with Roni. They're, like, way too fabulous. Like, look for real, real. You're Just fabulous. Like, mm, thank you, but, like, not like that. Like, they're, like... They're, like, abnormally stunning. Well, Cy also gets kitted out by Dior. Like, I think it's a different... That's where I would struggle, I think, with that. I mean, the fits alone. And, I mean, like, that's thing, too. Like, Uba's a model. You know what I mean? Like, she, her closet is insane from just, like, years and years of, like, I mean, working Jenna with designers. Lyons like Let, Jenna ass. Lyons don't even get me started. So, like, I just feel like that alone would... Like, I, I just don't think... I mean, Jessel... Like, that apartment's dope, but, like, I definitely think that they're, like, renting it. Like, I don't think it's necessarily a massive reflection of their finances. And I really like Jessel. Man, she had it. Turnaround kid. I Turnaround kid. I wasn't into it in the beginning. I wasn't either. I, and then I turned I very. Stand. Well, because her husband is hysterical. Love Pavit. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I just don't know if I could. I it, Like, I'm just being fair to the cast. I don't know that I would be, like, of the caliber like to fit in i don't have the wealth of any of them right like i That's could never I do it rachel me. also is like abso-fuck i mean how many times is hgtv gonna call us and rachel's like no, no. She's i mean so not interested she's not interested also they fuck up your house but she won't let me do it i also don't know if i have the skin I think I'm not thick skinned enough. I think that's what I've been thinking about actually recently, just because like, and you know, I've told, I've said this before, but I did audition for New Jersey. I did not get it. I was sad and relieved simultaneously. Yeah. Um, I not me. Can I just, now that we can talk about it, yeah. I was in the back room. Remember I was like, fuck yeah, yeah Taylor, do so this supportive. shit. I was, I was like, fuck yeah, you're going to fucking do this shit. Your numbers are going to fucking double. It's going to be fucking great. Then you're going to go on tour. You're going to get your fucking money. I, what I really was, I, I was hard only because as maybe an aggressive and intense friend, I want you to secure the fucking bag. Girl, I'm like, yo, do. I literally was like, this is going to be great. We're going to redo your wedding. We're going to redo your fucking I would absolutely. Bachelorette party. I, I, was, I know, but I really, I was, yeah. But it, it all makes sense. I mean, I don't watch New Jersey. I really don't watch, as you know, I don't, I'm watching New York and Salt Lake. I like walk, watching Salt Lake for Heather because I'm like worried about her always. Honestly, I was so off Heather um, between last season, the fucking black eye and the stupid girls trip. I was like, bye. And now she's, she's back best. and I love her again. Yeah, I really do. I will say this. So to go back to like the thing I was saying about like the divisive audience. So of course it annoys me when there's like divisiveness from the audience on like the Facebook page or like in the DMs to you guys. Because like, like at the end of the day, and I've said this to you before and I'll say it again, I just want the Taylor Shrekker show to be a fun experience for everybody. And we have like this huge family and I'm like, like fucking that, well, who's that mother in the nutcracker who's got like a fucking jilling kids under its big, huge skirt. Yeah, it's, um, don't be tardy for the party. <laughs> <laughs> What's that chick's name? She's so gnarly. What is her name? No, not her. What is her name though? What's the mother, the mother on the stage in the nutcracker? I can't. I, it, it's way too far out of my brain. I don't know. But 
I definitely like, but like, I can't even be mad at the audience who does that. I mean, I can be a little mad, but like, I do it for housewives. I, I conspiracy theorize. Oh, I see. I you know it. what I mean? So, um, I, I, I hear so you. So, I, I have to be able to at least understand it from an audience perspective because I do the same thing with fucking housewives, you know? And like, I can shit all over Heather Gay last season and then love Ultimate Girl Shit and then have, and then love her this season and then be, then be like, wait, I love her. Like, if I met her, like, she could be like, you're a fucking bitch. And I'd be like, no, I love you now. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, but remember the things you said. So, it's like, yeah. we, we're fucked up. We're all fucked up. Yeah, I mean, and you're putting And Bravo on... did it to us. Oh, I mean. And I love it. Yeah. But I can see the wrong in it. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you're also running, the Taylor Strecker show is like a motherfucking operation. I mean, you know what's crazy is that I was coming out of acupuncture, which you know I talk about acupuncture all the time. Mackenzie was standing there. No. Oh, literally a week ago. And I was so disoriented. You should have seen me. And you know how she's so chill? Yes. So I come out and I go, what are you, what are you doing? I, like, I almost thought I was being, like, candid camera or something. Because I'm like, it's like a doctor's appointment. You know what I mean? I was yeah. like, hi. And she's like, hey. Like, you know how Mackenzie does? Yes. And I was like, what are, you, what are you doing here? She's like, I have an appointment at 11. And I was like, did I, because of me? You know what I mean? I was like, and she's like, yeah, I met him, like, at your birthday party. Or, like, I was following I him or, like, whatever. Guess. But you know what I mean? I was like. What are you doing here? And I, I was like, I love, but it was like so out in the wild. And I'm like, what are you? Oh, hi. And she like came to my premiere the other day. Like, I don't I think know, people, I which that. was so sweet. Well, I was, that's the thing too with the family is I will say, so yeah, fuck the unfab 25. But I also like understand your role like in it. Like it, like it would be abnormal to not have it. So it's like, how mad can I be at it? Do you know what I mean? Listen, I think Andrea and I really tried to have the ruse that we like were like feuding and we just can't no. because we're like actually friends. But that's so. the thing. It's it's a big family. And that's like, exactly. and I do love that. I love that component. But like, it is a big, but just like a big family there, it's, it's, it is, it is a lot to manage. I have real. I can't imagine. I mean, where so being the most OG in podcasting, obviously new podcasts all the time. Speaking of Roni, Sai is now on Dear Media. I know. Um, I'm the only person I know that's not on Dear Media, <laughs> which is fine. And betches. I'm like, okay. But <laughs> what where do you see like because technically, and I learned a lot about this when I did my So House panel, I think. You and I, we all fa felt like I think at one point, whoever works in audio, like, oh my God, it's so saturated. Yes. Advertising is really, really tough. Advertising is technically yeah. down. Yeah. However, why smart businesswoman? Yeah. Why? It is because it's really hard to look at return on investment. It's like borderline impossible. It needs to really, like the affiliate stuff, like that you've done, I've done, we've all done. Yeah. It doesn't really do you. You're not driving your car or going on a walk or cleaning your house typically listening to a taste of taylor or whatever podcast you love cool 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 and then drive like going click to purchase you're not like oh i love like tummy flat tummy tea use like Got code it. 54321 and get 20 percent off you're not like let me pause this go on my phone and go and do it Right. So that click through rate, that return on investment is pretty challenging. But it's crazy because I worked in I worked in radio forever and like I mean the ad sales coming in for that were fucking bananas. Yeah, I think a lot of it is just the reality that like people's things the were world different. just runs differently. Yeah, now. it works right. differently. Because so, of social media, you can like so what you're saying is advertisers prefer those social media deals because it's immediate. Correct. correct. That makes so, sense. So but podcasting numbers are up. Like bigger crazy. than ever so yeah. people are loving podcasting it's just the advertising which is not there which is difficult which is why like patreon and all these things are so important right where a oh, wise one oh guru of all things audio do you see podcasting going i am the worst person to ask because i am like a fear-based thinker and especially because i am financially tethered and invested in this industry i um catastrophize everything oh, so okay, i'm like good. it's all going to end it's gonna be over what am i gonna do i can't have a real job after 20 years of being in audio like so that's what my fear says um but i think yeah, but the numbers don't lie to make the you feel numbers better. don't lie. But that's the thing. Like, I feel like it's only getting more and more popular. And like, I definitely have people being like, "Aren't you so upset that it gets so saturated?" I'm really not because I'm a recent podcast listener. I've been a podcast doer and a radio doer, but like, 
you don't necessarily, I don't find it good or empowering for me to listen to the thing that I'm a part of from a work perspective. It's like my dad going watching ER after a long day at work, you know, doing surgery. It's like, it's anxiety provoking. You want like a separation. Yeah. So it took me a long time to get into podcasting, but I listened to, I listened to Watch What Crappens because it's so far removed from what I do. Yeah, I love um, those guys. And They're I great. also love Bravo. It feels like a complete departure. And the way that I am, like, I'm so productive with podcasting. I want to get out of the house. I want to run errands. Like, TV for me is like, it's so bad. I want to be sedentary. I don't want to move. And I also watch, like, very, very actively. And especially because my job, I take notes and stuff. But, like, I, like, it's so nice to have a companion when you're out, like, commuting to work, you know, uh, doing errands, cooking, doing laundry, sure. all the things that, you know, you can't really be watching a show for to do. Yeah. It's like the best companion ever. So I definitely think it's just going to get more and more and more popular. And it's very nuanced and it's very niche. And like, I just like, I don't know if there's such a thing as too much of it. Cause yeah. there's so many, there's so many hours in the day to fill. I used to do a four hour radio show. Yeah. Four hour. Crazy. So now it's like I do one every single day and then I do a podcast here and then I guess on podcasts. It's like I no matter how hard I try, I can still not even get close to the amount of content I was doing before. Yeah. And if that's the case, then like there's so many people. I mean, people used probably to listen to me and then Patrick in the afternoons on Sirius Radio. And like that's like it's fucking six to eight hours of content. So that's crazy. The demand for content is out there. And podcasts are half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. Like I just feel like like, it, like, I never feel like I'm competing against my peers. It's like, oh, my God. Like, it's almost like you're in a club. It's like, I listen to Taste of Taylor and The Toast and Stassi. It's That's like, what I love about I love the, like, the way that camaraderie. we- Camaraderie. Yeah, it's actually really great. And uh, I think yeah. you'll also probably agree when other people that are in your community guest on your show, it just does the best. It really does. And I feel like it's a very, like, all ships rise with the same tide. It's a very nice feeling in podcasting. But I, I mean- I definitely am starting to like think more about like, okay, I love to podcast. Obviously the daily show is a daily show. That's like tried and true. That's like my, the base of my business. That's not going anywhere ever. And I love the Patreon element to it too. Yeah. And it's my bread and butter. I do daily content. That's what I do. I love it. I love being in the podcast sphere too. And like, I'm in a lucky spot because I can say, I can straddle the fence between subscription and ad sales. And I knew better from being at serious to know, like it is too scary to, to, um, solely exist at the hands of advertising. No, yeah, you can't. Because they're fickle. And the, the economy and a million different things. So um, I was insistent on keeping that subscription base because Sirius built that for me. So why not? Like, the audience was already primed to pay for content. Why would I give that up, yeah. you know? So I, and, and I had to fight with a lot of people to straddle those fences. Yeah. And I'm happy that I did. But, like, now it's like, okay, like, what is the next thing? More live shows. Like writing a book, like all that. Like I know I have to continue to diversify the portfolio. In my dream of dreams, I could just do audio and that would be enough. But I don't think that that's the future. Influencing, fashion, like it's like you have to do everything yeah, and just see which one really hits. And I actually don't think, I think it's the culmination of all of it, you know? I think you're right. Maybe we'll start acting again. Get the fuck out of here. Oh my God, we might. I love you, Taylor Strucker. And I know that I love you, Liz Cully. I'm at least in your top three favorite co-hosts on the Taylor Strucker show. I love you so much. Not you starting problems with your siblings. Thank you very much.